not only would 50 to 56 percent of doctors support Medicare for all, but patients would have the most choice under Medicare for all. Democratic Congresswoman Katie Porter broke down just how crooked the for-profit health care system is during a House Oversight Committee hearing on Medicare for All. Check this out. Dr. Collins, what percentage of revenue do private insurance companies spend on administrative costs? You know, between uh, 17 to 18% of, of spending in private insurance plans. So if I pay my insurance company $100, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, $17 go to administrative costs. What about Medicare? What do they spend on administrative costs? You know, that range is about you know, three to five, three to five percent. Three to five, three to five percent. About three to five percent, right here. And if we look at just billing costs, just billing and insurance costs, Medicare is at one percent. Wait, private companies spend 17 times more on administrative costs than Medicare? What are private insurance companies spending on that Medicare is not? Does Medicare spend hundreds of millions of dollars on television advertisements like private insurance does? Dr. Collins? Uh, no. Does Medicare spend millions of dollars on stock buybacks to shareholders? No. Does Medicare um, spend money on marketing? Private insurance likes to put its name on stadiums and PGA tournaments. Is there a Medicare arena? No. Does Medicare spend $23 million on executive pay like private insurance companies do? No. We know how much it costs to run a high quality health insurance program. $1. Out of $100, research shows that Medicare spends 1.1% on administrative costs. We spend $4 trillion on health care every year. We could save $200 billion on administrative costs with Medicare for all. And those savings? They could go to expand Medicare. We could spend that money to let patients see dentists. We could let, spend that money to let patients pay for hearing aids, to help older adults afford eyeglasses, to bring down the cost of prescription drugs, to finally pay mental health professionals for the work they do. Instead, all this money is wasted. We're not talking about paying to keep the lights on in operating rooms or improving the quality of care. All this money is used to, to, to pay big insurance to push paper. It's death by 200 billion paper cuts. Now, administrative costs waste money, but they also waste healthcare workers' time. A recent study found that a majority of doctors, 56%, support a single payer healthcare program. Why? Because today doctors spend only one quarter of their time with patients. What are they doing with the rest of their time? Paperwork. 90, and I want to also I want to add, not only would 50 to 56% of doctors support Medicare for all but patients would have the most choice under Medicare for all. The health insurance coverage with the biggest network is Medicare. No private insurance comes close. 99% of pediatric, non-pediatric doctors participate in Medicare. So I want to recap. Medicare for all would save many on administrative costs, 200 billion a year. Medicare for all would give patients the most choices, 99% of non-pediatric providers, and Medicare would let doctors practice medicine. Not surprisingly, given these three things, what do we get with Medicare for All? Better health outcomes. So first, I have another clip coming up from AOC later on, but this is just, again, fantastic job here by Katie Porter. What she is so successful at doing is breaking down otherwise complicated issues into more easily digestible chunks for the average person to understand. So she's a great teacher in that sense. And you see here, she lays it out, how the for-profit motive in the American healthcare system, how it screws the average person. Now, if you missed any of my coverage during the Democratic primary in 2020, I covered this issue constantly because it was, you know, front and center with Bernie Sanders fighting for Medicare for all. So there was constant misinformation about Medicare for all. As somebody that experiences this system in Canada, I'm well aware of the benefits of Medicare for all of a of a single payer system, and also understanding that Bernie's plan would have gone even further by guaranteeing things like dental care, which currently is not guaranteed under Canada's healthcare system. 
But just it, there is no denying this even, uh, anymore. Even a libertarian think tank accidentally admitted that Medicare for all would save a whopping $2 trillion over 10 years. Even they could not deny the reality. <laughs> so, and by the way, I did a video on that as well back then. So I'll link to that uh, below this video. But it, it is just, there's no denying it. I mean, even even trying to, um, you know, uh, even trying to fight this in any way, it, it's just, it's a losing battle. When you have the entire world against you showing various, you know, universal systems, but right next door, Canada, a single payer system, what Medicare for all is, showing this, how six, more successful it is compared to the American system. Now, as I've said a billion times, if you are super wealthy in America, yeah, healthcare is great. But I mean, should that be what you, should you need to be incredibly wealthy to have great healthcare in a country? I personally think that healthcare is a right, that you should have great healthcare regardless. You should have the same quality healthcare that anybody else, you know, that is worth more than you has. It shouldn't change depending on how much money you have. Healthcare is healthcare. Healthcare should be a right. So any debate about this at all is just coming from insurance companies, coming from those that have a vested for-profit interest in keeping this disgusting for-profit system going. Now, let's get to the AOC clip where she tackles this from another angle. So in the case of individual coverage, if the total cost is around $7,400 and your employer pays, say, $6,200 and then you pay for around $1,200, now that's thousands of dollars more that everyday people could be saving per year if it weren't going directly to insurance companies' uh, private profits, correct? Yes. Interesting. <laughs> so one of the things that we're really seeing here is that the potential to moving to a Medicare for all system could actually give people a raise in many circumstances. And that may sound crazy to some, but that is true, especially if you are in a union. So if you think about it, if your union no longer has to fight for health care coverage, if that is simply guaranteed to you through a Medicare for all system, high quality healthcare already already guaranteed to you, they no longer have to fight for that, meaning they get to fight for higher wages, they can fight for better working conditions. It frees them up in negotiations. So, I mean, this this is experienced by unions all across the world. They don't have to fight for healthcare. They get to fight for other things. And you see here another, I mean, this is one of those side benefits that I think most people don't even consider or think about because because of how all-encompassing healthcare is, it can be hard to really imagine just how much of a life-changing aspect it would be to have it guaranteed to you. So think of all the time you would no longer have to waste weighing different health insurance options or having to, you know, pay whatever you owe or having to think about if you don't have insurance or don't have great insurance, thinking about, you know, what is covered, what isn't covered. All of that time is now freed up. You now, all you have to do, if you have to go to the doctor, you walk in, you walk out. I mean, in Canada, you show your health card. You walk in, here's my health card, that's it, you walk out. Same thing, I, I had to go to the hospital once for, for surgery, minor surgery. Planned ahead of time, I walk in, they see me, I have the surgery, I walk out, I go home, that's it. <laughs> like, there's, there's, I never think about healthcare unless I need it because I don't have to think about it. So I think for, you know, for a lot of Americans, that is just a simply foreign, a foreign concept. They can't even imagine what life would be like without that aspect. But that's what it does. In addition to, of course, saving you money, saving most people. I mean, if you're like a, you know, Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos and a proper Medicare for all system is implemented, hopefully you're paying more in your taxes than, than other people are. Um, but that's the idea. The super wealthy would be paying more through the taxes for healthcare uh, than the average person does. But the, the average person, people who aren't incredibly wealthy, will be saving money. They will be paying less through their taxes than they currently do to health insurance. Not to mention, you know, out-of-pocket expenses and co-pays and all that garbage. That's just, that's completely gone. So there are so many, so many benefits. And honestly, I forget, <laughs> I forget half of them because, again, I live in this system.
So I really have to consciously think about how my life is different compared to those that don't have healthcare guaranteed to you. Another one, I was able to start doing this, you know, become self-employed without having to worry about losing healthcare because it's guaranteed to me. So, you know, it frees up the ability. I mean, that's a, that could be a conservative argument. It frees up the, uh, the small businessman <laughs> to start their business because they have healthcare guaranteed to them. So there are just endless benefits. And I'm glad some of those were explored here in this hearing. And notice how there has been very little news about this Medicare for all uh, hearing. I mean, <laughs> unless the media is really forced to talk about it like they are with, if you know, if Bernie's talking about it in a, in a, in a campaign for president, then they're forced to discuss it. But if they aren't forced to discuss it, they will completely ignore the issue because they are directly tied in with the for-profit health insurance industry. They rarely ever, or they really never challenge it unless they have someone on like Bernie who challenges it. But regardless, they themselves rarely ever actually challenge the systems in place. They're all about the status quo. So recognize as well how little coverage this uh, issue has gotten despite the fact that there's been a hearing for Medicare for All this week.